Guys, just just think about it like you're putting more energy into it than you really need to, because you you really trying to mess something up. What's good, homies? Welcome back to Homie Checkpoint. I'm Josh. He's Alex. How y'all doing today? Today we're gonna talk about the arcane arts, or like as I like to call them, that boogity boogity stuff. And he's calling. He's talking about casting. You know, like spells. Yeah, I'm talking about casting spells. Bro, ain't no need to be like that. You always correct me. I guess. So this is probably gonna be the first of many videos we make on this specific topic because spell casting is such a broad topic in and of itself. Now, if you want us to make a video on a specific, let's say, school of magic or anything else in this spectrum of things, so if you have questions, let us know in the comments below. We can answer to the best of our ability. Or, hey, if you're here for the memes, we got you. We briefly covered what spell slots and, you know, all that jazz in another video, but we gonna cover it again more in depth in this video because I know how y'all's memory be. So let's say you made just a little bit of a boo-boo and you picked a caster class to play for your first time playing D&D. And I mean, it's not gonna be that bad. Maybe, who knows? Anyways, anyways, now it's time to read. Now, you gotta at least know your class well enough to know what spells you're gonna have at level one. And if you don't, I mean, damn, that sucks. But there's this handy little uh, table in the class section of the player's handbook that'll let you know what you have at any given level. Unfortunately, there ain't no way to go about this other than reading, so uh, pull up them reading glasses, cowpoke. So after you get done reading and figuring out which spells suck, which ones don't, essentially figuring out which ones you want, we have to have a talk about D&D's mana management system. Now, if you've looked at the character sheet literally at all, you would notice they have this, these things called spell slots on. Now, every time you cast a spell, it'll use a spell slot of the appropriate level. And you can always cast a lower level spell using a higher level spell slot. And if it has effects for casting at a higher level, it will let you know in the spell's description. Now, if you ain't a caster, the fuck you doing here? Go, go, throw that sheet away, throw the sheet away, and get, get, go. <laughs> so let's start with cantrips, which can also be looked at as level zero spells. So I'm not going to lie, like I said in the other video, some of these is not that great. And you're going to outgrow them pretty quickly. But the trade-off about them is that they don't cost anything, and by that I'm talking about the spell slots. Now, let's take for example, the best damage in cantrip, good old Eldritch Blast. Now, at the, at the levels 5, 11, and 17, these uh, damaging cantrips gain an extra damage die as a way to show your character's progression and them getting stronger in the arcane arts. Papa Domino raises up his hands as he begins to cast Booty Buster Bonanza. <sighs> Dingus, it is your turn. Fuck, we, we done fought this dude three times. No rest. <sighs> I don't got no spells left. Guess we memeing. Uh... Can I Eldritch? Dude, really, all Warlocks fucking do is Eldritch Black. Bro, what the fuck am I supposed to do, bro? We've been at this for 13 damn hours. I got two spell slots. Would your like, stupid ass bro, long like, ass be like, I should have killed your like, character bro, in my like, campaign. The fuck, is fuck Roy, Roy boy. Fuck. Man, we took him down three goddamn times. Your family never liked you, you know that? And I don't understand why when you DM, you gotta be so damn obnoxious, bro. Your daddy left you because he knew you'd spam Eldritch Blast. I hope you're happy. Okay, so we're gonna start with level one spells. Now, they're the first spells that your character is ever going to get access to. And, I mean, yeah, some of them are useful for the entirety of the game, and others, well, they get power crept faster than your favorite competitive pastime. See, now once you get some experience under your belt, the game's gonna expect you to know about casting spells at higher levels, and you, you don't wanna let the game down. Trust me, it knows. Um, uh, okay, anyways, so we're gonna take the first level evocation spell, Burning Hands. We're gonna use this as an example. Burning Hands is, uh, it does 3d6 fire damage, and if you cast it using a second level spell slot, it does 4d6. Now, most, but not all, damaging spells have rulings for casting spells at a higher level, and it's usually just adding an extra damage die. Guys, just think about it like you're putting more energy into it than you really got to, because, I mean, you you really trying to mess this thing up. 
Now, the same rules apply to every spell level. The only thing is, it's really up to you to keep track of when you get access to a higher level spell slot. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the schools of magic. Of which there are eight. Oh, fuck you. Here is this flower. Take it. All right, once you've got that memorized, we got to talk about spell list. There are a lot of spells that can only be learned by specific classes. Oh, shit. For example, only sorcerers have access to Chaos Bolt, and boy, if you were a sorcerer and you didn't take Chaos Bolt, I'm going to find you, and I'm going to put it on your character sheet when you ain't looking, I swear to God. Well, okay. Um, so if your source for spells isn't actual trash it should tell you what class can take what spells now for like for example only sorcerers can take chaos bolt whereas every class in the game get access gets access to detect magic now this may make you want to rethink what class you want to play if you've read a lot of the spells in the game we know you didn't i mean yeah so guys it looks like you've gotten to the part where we get to talk about preparing spells now not every class gets access to a prepared spell list and if you're like the fuck are you talking about well, you're not one of these classes, or you obviously weren't paying attention when you were deciding which class you wanted to play, and those are these. Shout out to wizards who still get to learn spells out in the wild, by the way, including their prepared spell list. So, yeah, prepared spells. If you got it, it should be in the spellcasting section in your character information. Now, what it really boils down to is you have every spell on your spell list that you currently have access to. Like, level one characters have every level one spell. But the stipulation here is you have to prepare which spells you want to use at the beginning of the day. So let's be a little bit more specific. Let's talk about like the Druid and the Paladin. So for the nature boys, the way they know how many spells they have prepared is they look at their wisdom modifier and they add it to their Druid level. Now that is because they are a full caster, but the Paladin is only a half caster. So he would look at his charisma modifier, which is his spell casting mod, and then round down half of his Paladin level, add those two together, and that's how many spells he would have prepared. Clerics are also full casters, so they use the same rules as Druids. Artificers are half casters, so they use the same rulings as Paladin. Wizards are their own thing entirely. They deserve their own video, really. So now let's talk about ritual casting, which is a cheeky little way to get around using a spell slot. But the cost of it is it's going to take an extra 10 minutes to cast this spell. And boy, you better do some planning because 10 minutes is a long time in combat. Now, not every class has access to it. I'm sorry, guys. you got to either manage your slots or, hey, there's a feat for it. On the other hand, not every spell can be ritual casted. There will be this little tag beside the spell name if it can be casted this way. So make sure you are on the lookout for that so you can give your DM a hard time and save all those neat little spell slots for the boss. Now, we have to preface this. You do have to have those spells prepared to cast them as ritual spells. Unless you're a wizard, I guess they can just do magic however the fuck they want. It's the trade they give for being so squishy. And sorcerers? Man, yeah, fuck those guys. Oh, uh, I'm a ritual cast to take magic. Bro, bro, we in the middle of we in the middle of a dungeon. Ten minutes is too goddamn long. We gotta go. No, who you talking to, boy? Like, don't meta game. I, I want to see if this rock is cool. Bro, it's just a rock. It wouldn't even be there if you hadn't asked about it. Oh, hold, hold on. Let him do what he wants. Hell yeah. Fuck you, Alex. This is probably a goddamn cool rock. Yo, yo, yo. Whoa, 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 whoa. I hear footsteps, bro. Hold on, man. I'm, I'm almost there. And in walks. Fuck me, dude. 
Alex, you, you got this. I'm, I'm almost done. Bro! So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoy it. And if you did, you can catch us next week. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe with that notification bell turned on. Catch you on later.